director and founder of Unlabel. We are a social enterprise, an MPO based in Cologne, Germany. And I'm a white, central woman, 173 meters tall. I have blonde, curly, long hairs, and I'm wearing today like a yellow top with a black cardigan and a black trousers. And my sign language name is like the L of Lisette and blonde, curly hairs. So there where it comes from. And with Unlabel, we have been advocating for the rights to cultural participation with a special focus on people with disabilities. So the, so no, with a special focus on people with disabilities on national and European level since over nine years. And our aim is to bring people together with and without disabilities in national and international projects. We provide a platform where we build initiatives and uh, networks, and our projects are serving as best practice models how inclusion can be possible and how everybody can participate in culture. Because art and culture must be equally accessible to everyone, because it plays a central role in promoting full human development and the realization of the human rights. The right to cultural participation is not only formulated in the UN Convention, which you probably know, um, but for example, in Article 27 of the Univer uh, Universal Declaration of the Human Rights, it was already um, published in 1948. So we are talking about uh, the, the rights of people with disability and culture since already so long. But as we all know, from practice, not everybody gets the chance to participate, to experience, or to create culture. There are over 20, uh, 42 million people in the EU with a recognized severe disability. So we are talking about 12.8% of the population in Europe. And if we expand the definition of disability by including mild or moderate disabilities, for example, depressions or think about long COVID at the moment, then the number rises to far than 20% of the population in Europe. So we are not talking about disabled people as a small marginalized group of the population, but across Europe, like artists, cultural practitioners, and also, and we are focusing on audience at the moment, they um, report significant barriers in their full participation in culture. And this is also proven, and I really think it's a good thing to look it up for you, by the study Time to Act, how lack of knowledge in the cultural sector creates barriers for disabled artists and audience, which was published by the British Council and On the Move, and I think most of you know On the Move, in March 21, as part of the Creative Euro project, Europe Beyond Access. But cultural participation of people with disabilities is not a nice to have, so it is a human right. And how can cultural practitioners, how can you ensure cultural participation? And one possibility, an artistic and aesthetic approach, is the aesthetic of access. And we researched on this topic with over 350 artists, um, scientists, and experts from over seven countries in our Creative Europe project in part. Aesthetic of access is an approach that starts from the equality of perception opportunities of people with and without disabilities in the production and re reception of art. It makes it possible to experience the potential of an understanding of art that is conceived and practiced without barriers. With the aesthetic of access, the means of accessibility become artistic vocabulary and their use part of the artwork. And in dance, for example, we consider how costumes can make movements hearable for a blind audience, or how music pen can be physically felt by a deaf audience through deep resonating bass sounds. But the creative use of the classical accessibility tools is also being researched, like audio description, sign language, subtitling. They are all becoming integrated into the artwork from the beginning and already during the conception phase. So you're thinking from the beginning, how can you make your artwork accessible to everybody? 
In this way, they are transformed into artistic means that become essential to the aesthetics and the dramaturgy of the artwork. Based on the work, they are part of an aesthetic unity from the beginning. So in other words, they are not an add-on or not a translation, but independent tools of artistic expression on an equal footing to normal conventional means like lights, voice, movement, music, etc. And with our project, which was the first one on an international level, which really structurally researched on the topic of aesthetic of access, um, we resulted in three international productions, um, which were premiered at the Greek National Opera in 2019, so it's a long time already ago, and they are touring to date in Europe. And to give you a little visual insight, I would like to show you the video, and I hope it will work. Little by little we discover we can break each other's fall, as long as we can fall together. We can share our breath and our weight. We can crush into each other. I explode break into pieces. Don't go. I need you here. I'm waiting. Don't you feel my signals? I'm calling you. I'm waving. It's your turn now to take the steps. Come closer. Stop hesitating, please disturb my peace, invade my space, be bold, be fearless, I'm waiting for you. So you can see gravity is a really good example of how accessibility is not a limitation, but instead it is an extension of the artistic vocabulary. So on the one hand, gravity is like a normal dance piece, which like many others is based on the dance of two dances and accompanied by the music, of course. But already during the rehearsal process and really from the first moment on, we ask ourselves how can we make this piece um, accessible to a blind and also deaf audience on international level. So the audio description was not created as an add-on, so it was the base of the whole performance. And usually, and that's also why I described myself in the beginning, audio description is like an objective description about something. And it's only heard in performing arts um, through headphones for the blind or visually impaired um, audience. But in gravity, the audio description is a poetic audio description and artistic one and everybody in the audience is listening who is able to hear to the audio description. So, and also the process of the creation was really uh, fascinating because the AD was part from the beginning, as I said, and the movement inspired the words, words and the words inspired the movement. So it was a really collaborative way how the artists worked together um, to create this piece. And as I said, we also wanted to make the piece accessible to a deaf audience on international level. And I don't know if you know, but this is quite complex because every country has its own sign language. So what did we do? We used international sign, which is not like a language. It's more a compromise between different sign language from different countries. And it's quite understandable, understandable by a lot of deaf people. And we used visual vernacular. And visual vernacular, um, I don't think you are familiar with it. It's like a own art form coming from the deaf community, which is really influ influenced by the gaming scene. So, um, and you could see some parts in the trailer of this visual vernacular. So it's really 3D movements. And also what is really nice with visual vernacular, um, we as people who are not able to speak sign language can understand visual vernacular much better. So you can see through this integrated audio description and the use of the sign language, the work gains in complexity and diversity. And the work with aesthetic of access always operates in the concrete field of tension between aesthetics, the social and the politics. 
It always guarantees people access to social and aesthetic participation in areas and processes of society from which they tend to be structurally excluded. And seen in this way, this art and culture is always also social vision and practice. Because we are convinced that tools developed here can be transferred to other areas of society. And I just can you invite you to join us and to rethinking the stages of our society because I can tell you it's really fun to think art and culture in a different way and to make it accessible. So thank you and if you have questions please write us and we are always willing to help other cultural practitioners on their learning journey towards more access and inclusion. Great.